Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And it's something I'm sure that everyone has noticed that in the past uh, five to ten years or so, anytime somebody goes seeking advice on any sort of subject, whether it's home dentistry or gardening or whatever you might want to be trying to do, they always say, go watch a YouTube video. And so in that uh, spirit, I've decided to make a YouTube video that answers every possible question about rewiring a simple decorator lamp. Yeah, at least that's the plan. Now the lamp we have on the bench for the purposes of this uh, YouTube video is a decorator lamp from the 1960s, maybe into the 70s. The base here, which uh, starts from here and goes down, is made of steel and would be brass plated. This main decorative piece here in the middle is all one part from here to here, and uh, it's made of pot metal. It's a simple casting. There's actually, even though a little difficult to see, some flutes here, which give it a little more of a flair to it. Now, the reason this lamp is being rewired, other than the fact that it's 50 to 60 years old, is that somewhere in the past, this end of the cord got uh, caught on something and got pulled apart. So that obviously is not going to work. Now in the modern home, a lamp is a decorator item first and a source of light second. And that means that most of your options on a lamp rewire are decorator decisions. We have the cord here and you can replace it with any color you want as long as it's one of these, black, gold, white, brown, silver, and this weird one, which they call antique gold, which I think is more of a bronze color. And there are also available some uh, cloth, rayon covered reproduction types if you've got a really old lamp and you want to keep that period look to it. But most people pick one of these. The next decorated decision is, do you want a three-way bulb or a one-way bulb? This is very simple is that this is a bulb which has three settings, one very bright, one in the middle, and one dim. With this one, you get whatever brightness it is. This is an LED bulb, which looks like the old style Edison bulb. And this is a regular old uh, incandescent bulb, but they do have LEDs available for three ways these days. Now, the magic trick that they use to perform this is two different socket interiors. For the regular one-way bulb, on the base here, we have a center terminal and the shell that screws into the socket. And in here, we have simply the shell on the outside and this little copper colored uh, terminal in the middle. For the three way, we've got the same center terminal and the shell, but there's another ring in between it. And in the socket itself, we can see that there's actually a little extra piece there, which will contact that ring when it's screwed all the way in. Either of these inserts will fit inside the socket shell. And in the base, there's a row of uh, teeth around here. But on the top, there's teeth in only two places. So it snaps together. And uh, very hard to pull apart. But right here, this says press, stamped into the shell. You push that with your thumb, and it comes right off. The shell on our lamp is pretty badly bent and battered. So if you look right here, we see some fine threads. These are called UNO or UNO threads. I have no idea what the UNO stands for, but what they do is they let you screw on a little small fitter like this, which can be used to hold a small glass shade. And there are paper or silk shades that screw directly onto it. But it comes apart just by pressing on it there. And you can pull what's left of this cord out of here and we're almost ready to start rewiring. Now before you try to take the base off, look carefully at the neck to see if there's a little screw like this one here. Some sockets use it to lock the socket against the uh, pipe. If you see one, just remove it, take it out. Now this one doesn't have any kind of a little screw, but I have a tiny pair of pliers here. These are called ignition pliers, 
they go back to the days when car ignitions could actually be worked on and repaired, which uh, that ended pretty much around 1975. But they will fit in here, and I can grab a hold of the neck and get it to turn a little bit, and then it should come off without too much trouble. And now we're ready to begin rewiring the lamp. Now this starts down here at the base with this hole where the cord will go through. And we don't want our cord against this sharp metal edge here. So a plastic protector snaps into place. And then where the cord goes up through the pipe, I have another protector which screws onto the end. And that ensures that the metal parts of the lamp won't cut through our cord. And a good step to always remember is put this through the hole before you start sending it up the pipe. Because otherwise you're going to have to take it all apart and do it all over again. This, with a simple lamp like this, you can push the wire all the way up to the top. Now up here is where the important stuff happens, because if you do this right, you're going to have a lamp. If you do this wrong, you're going to have a hazard to life and property. And I like to put a nut on top of the harp, and then put a little of this blue thread lock, so that when I get this tight, it will stay tight while somebody's changing the bulb. And I don't have to tighten it with my little ignition pliers till it screams. Because it's entirely possible to strip these things out if you try to get them really tight so that they never come loose again. Now, I could put this back together with a regular shell type socket like came off of it. But for just a little bit more money, I can have one of these very fine captured ring sockets. Like that. And I prefer to use those for customer pay work because it's kind of impressive when they see it. And I know that no matter how many light bulbs get changed, this one's never coming apart. I'll slide it down here. Put a little more blue goop on it. And don't lose this little piece here. And also, if you're using this type, make sure you put the ring on first. Now, this little notch here is going to go to the back. And so I line it up with that hole in the bottom, which, as you can see, is not all the way down. But I get this turned around like this. I tighten this little screw in place. And now my socket is going to be perfectly aligned when I get the thing put back together. Now we have to start worrying about the hazards to life and property. It is entirely possible for somebody walking across a room to trip over a lamp cord and yank this cord so hard that it could be pulled out from underneath these screw terminals. That would be very bad because you've got two live wires connected to your breaker box and they're now down in the pipe where it's all made of steel. And if it doesn't pop the breaker immediately, which is possible, the first person who comes to pick up the lamp is going to get a nasty shock, maybe even worse. So to prevent that from happening, I peel back about that much wire. I make a loop like this. I make a loop like this. So it's a pretzel. And this is called the underwriter's knot. And what that will do is that no matter how hard somebody pulls on the cord, they can't yank it down into the pipe, and it will stay underneath the uh, screw terminals. Now, to continue protecting life and property, a few more points to make. These wires are going to be underneath screw terminals. And all wiring sold for lamps in, in the United States is made with these multi-stranded wires. The electric, National Electrical Code says you can't put stranded wires under screw terminals because they will just spread out like this and you'll never get them really tight and then you'll have a problem. So the tips of these wires have little p 
pieces of solder on the end of them, which turns all those multi-stranded wires into one wire. Next up, the wire sold for lamps in, in North America. One side has smooth insulation, one side has ridges. And that's very important because on the socket we have a brass colored screw and a silver colored screw. The brass colored screw goes through the key up to the center terminal and we put the smooth wire on it. Wrap it around clockwise, bend it down, get it nice and snug underneath there, and then when you tighten it down, it draws the wire under the screw instead of pushing it out. You can do the same thing on the silver screw. Try to get this around here where you can see what I'm doing. Bend it down. And tighten it down. And then this knot can simply ride up the cord all the way up to the top like that. And I can pull on it and seat it down here. Let me get this out of the way. I don't want that sticking out. And seat it down in our socket. Now our socket shell, with the paper insulator in place, it comes down. This goes up all the way up in there. And there's a little bump right here that fits in that notch in the back. that seated down and very carefully screw this on get it nice and tight fully seated and this lamp job is finished Well, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. I want to thank you for uh, sitting through this video. It should answer every possible question about how to rewire a lamp. If I've missed something, ask it in the comments. If you've got any other questions about anything, put them in the comments too. I'll read them all, I'll respond to them all, and I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.